Yeah, hi there. And uh, these comments are for Andy, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer of all of your lessons at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. So you completed one of the independent writing practice tests. My teaching assistant scored you about 2.5 out of 5. So uh, I think that's probably a little bit too low, but there are some things that you can do, I think, that can make this essay stronger than what it is. Right now, let me do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Now, let's open it up here. Go into a new document here. Okay, here we go. Now, I think the main thing that my TA's probably having trouble with is this is one of these compare and contrast type writing assignments, so you have to be careful that you follow the structure of the prompt. This one says compare the advantages of living in university housing with the advantages of living in an apartment in the community. Where would you prefer to live? Give reasons for your preference. So, so what I would do... You structured it mostly as an argumentative essay with your arguments being expressed in paragraph two and three. Uh, I would probably, because the, the main part of this question is actually comparing the advantages of the two, right? So then you could restructure this. So let's say, This is what I would do here. I'm, I'm giving you just a, a suggestion on how you can rewrite it so it's a little bit better framed around the uh, assignment. I would say here option because each is singular. Okay, so the second paragraph looks at the advantages of living in the dormitories, right? Then the next paragraph, it looks at the advantages of living outside the university. And then you get to your opinion here. Right? So what I would do is probably get rid of this paragraph. Let's put it aside for a minute. Okay, so let's kind of work with it a little bit now. And I'm going to just slightly rewrite it, give you an idea of how you can restructure your essay. What I'm doing is, is I'm reframing the essay more as a compare and contrast type essay and less as an argumentative essay. Because it does say in the first part of the question, compare the advantages of living in university housing with the advantages of living in an apartment in the community. All right. So then with this first paragraph, I'll say something like this. And I apologize. Sometimes I will not talk. I cannot talk and think sometimes at the same time. So this is just kind of some general statements. So when students attend universities, they have to make decisions concerning their major, So they have to make decisions concerning their major, 
whether or not they will join fraternities or sororities. I'm going to make it more parallel here. Okay, let's say Okay, so I'm just giving some general statements here. So when students attend universities, they, they have to make decisions concerning what their majors will be, whether or not they will join fraternities or sororities, and whether they will get jobs to help finance their educations. Of course, students will have to decide where they will live so they'll have the best studying and studying environments possible. Then we lead into this idea. So we start out with some general states. Besides apartments that are available outside universities, some universities provide dormitories for students to live in. When the time the students need to choose, when the time comes, you'll want to say here, the students need to choose where to stay. When the time comes in which students need to choose where to stay, they need to think about the advantages of each option. I'm going to say make this a little more concise. So they they need to think about the advantages of living in universities I would just say here, university, dormitories, or apartments outside universities. The key here, when you get to the comparing part, you want to be objective. Then you might say, so you'll say, first of all, letting students
Yeah, this one I'm going to rearrange it just a little, little bit. Here, let's take this idea. So say living in the dormitories that are located... I don't even think you need to say that. That's, that's just too wordy. So let's do this. So living in the... Living in the university dormitories... I'm going to say something like this, three main advantages for students, something like that. I'm just going to take your points and then develop each of them a little bit more. Do you see what I'm saying? So what I'm doing is you got good writing style. I think this one you, you, I think you lost points. And I don't know if I would give you a 2.5. My TA is a little bit hard on this. But he has read, you got to remember here, this guy has read thousands and thousands of essays on this topic and many others. And your topic doesn't, the way that you organized it doesn't compare very well with a lot of the way the other students did it. And that's why I scored you lower. So if you said living in the university dormitories have three main advantages for students, then you can use like this, something like this. First of all, since students live on campus, they will be better to focus on their studies better they will not have to worry about driving maybe to campus order to study or attend class. The time these students save from driving will help them to spend more time focusing on their biology, math, science, language classes, and so on. Now, I may not be able to get all your points here. Let me take a look. I'm going to see how, if I get about 100 words to a paragraph, we've got to move on, right? Now, we still, we can probably develop one more point. So, the other one is, Be able to save money since
So second of all, students who live on campus were able to save money since the living expenses are included in one package. You can put including all you utilities So I'm going to say there's two advantages because I think we're at 100 words right here. We can't, you got to be realistic. You can't, you have to make sure that you not, okay, we're good. We need to end this paragraph. So here, I'm going to change this to two. So living in the dormitory, And because we have a gerund, so living in the dormitories has, we use has because the subject is a gerund phrase, has two main advantages. We don't even have to say students here because we already said it after. First of all, since students live on campus, they will be able to focus on their studies better because they will not have to worry about driving to campus in order to study or attend class. The, the time these students save from driving will help them to spend more time focusing. I use focus because that seems to be an important word that you wanted to use here. Focus on the biology, math, science, language classes, and so on. Second of all, students who live on campus will, will be able to save money since the living, the living expenses are included in one package. For example, students will make a payment of about $2,000, which includes the rent for their dorms, including all utilities and their meals each day in the school cafeteria. In fact, in many cases, students can choose a meal package which best fits their budget. I think we got it. Now we've, 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 we've dealt with this idea, and you had three points. I'm just dealing with them in two because that's all we have time for. And let's take a look at what our two paragraphs are. We need to go to the next one. So we're at 242 words. I always recommend between um, 350 to 450 words is usually pretty good. A lot of my students including Felix, who just got 29 out of 30 on the writing section of his TOEFL exam. He wrote 500, no joke, on his practice test. Then we might say... living outside universities we'll say help students to balance their study life and social life by mingling with people around their living places. In addition, the students
They learn to manage some apartment-related documents by themselves. Thus, they can learn how to handle such things. So what I would do here is, this is good. This is all you have to do here. So now we're just about done with this. Okay, so now we just need to develop this one paragraph. So, living outside universities helps students to balance their study life and social life by mingling with people around their living places. For example, Okay, let's say Yeah, I think we have an idea here. So you have living outside universities help students to balance their study life and social life by mingling with people around their living places. For example, if students live So if students live off campus in apartments, they will meet people who are from the community and who may invite them to social gatherings such as parties and, and dances that they might not have heard of had they chosen to live in dorms. In addition, the students learn to manage some apartment related documents by themselves, thus they can learn how to handle such things. Okay, let's see how we are. I think we need to develop that one idea a little bit more. See what we got. Pretty close. So we have to figure out, okay, what types of apartment-related documents will they have to manage? Assigning leases.
utility such as water, electricity, and gas. I think we're okay there. That should give us just about what we need. And we'll do what you did. We'll use your word here. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is your argument here, right? So I think what we've done here is this, the way that we organize it, it's more clearly framed around the actual question. So the first paragraph kind of sets up what's going on. Then you explain what you're comparing. In the second paragraph, you discuss uh, those who prefer to live in university dormitories. In the third paragraph, you talk about those people who like to live outside or off campus in, in apartments. And then you explain your opinion. I would say, because my dream is becoming a tenure professor, I consider my study career seriously. Therefore, I prefer living in university, let's just use here, university dormitories because I can focus most of my energy into my studies without worrying about How about additional living expenses so because I can focus most of my energy into my studies without worrying about additional living expenses and handling some complex documents related to I think you probably want to say here I'm going to say related to off campus apartment housing then you have there is there is another distraction that can significantly disturb me from my studying for instance commuting to the university must take time how about just put here takes Unnecessary time and and energy. It is better if I stay in the university housing so that I can manage my time and energy efficiently and allocate it to improve the quality of my study. 
And I think you can just end there, believe it or not, with this compare and contrast type. I think once you explain where you would prefer to live and why, I think you're done. Get rid of that idea. Let's take a look at what we have now. How many words do we have? I think that we're fine now. Yes, 466. Perfect. Okay, so what did I do really? I, I mostly restructured what you had, and I, I restructured it more as a compare and contrast type essay. And um, then I, I just basically kept what you had in the final paragraph and then deleted some information there. So this is a restructure of your paper that, and I think that your score 2.5 maybe was a little low. I would probably score between 3.0 and 3.5, which you're probably still not going to be happy with because I know, and I know you got really good language skills. You got really good word choice, excellent sentence structure. Um, you have a lot of really, really good experience with language, right? Yeah, hi there. And uh, what I want to do now is to go ahead and read the essay one more time and make sure we have it pretty clean. Okay, so let's do spell check first. All right, so we're good there. Okay, let's go paragraph by paragraph. When students attend universities, they have to make decisions concerning what their majors will be, whether or not they will join fraternities or sororities, and whether they will get jobs to help finance their educations. Now, I just put these two sentences in there to just give some, make some general statements about universities and students, and then we narrow our focus when we say, of course, students will have to decide where they will live so, so they will have the best living and studying environments possible. Besides apartments that are available outside universities, some universities provide dormitories for students to live in. When the time comes in which students need to choose where to stay, they need to think about the advantages of living in university dormitories or apartments outside universities. Living in the university dormitories has two main advantages. First of all, since students live on campus, they will be able to focus on their studies better because they will not have to worry about driving to campus in order to study or attend class. The time these students save from driving will help them spend more time focusing on their biology, math, science, language classes, and so on. Second of all, students who live on campus will be able to save money since their living expenses are included in one package. For example, students will make a payment of about $2,000, which includes the rent for their dorms, including all utilities, and their meals each day in the school cafeteria. In fact, in many cases, students can choose a meal package which, which best fits their budget. On the other hand, living outside universities helps students to balance between their study life and social life by mingling with people outside around their living places. For example, if students live off campus in apartments, they will meet people who are from the community and who may invite them to social gatherings. Such as parties and dances that they might not have heard of had they chosen to live in dorms. Notice when I say had they chosen actually means if they had chosen. In addition, these students learn to manage some apartment related documents by themselves. Thus, they can learn how to handle such things. For example, these students learn the legal implications of signing leases, and in some cases they learn how to pay utility bills such as water, electricity, and gas. Then you have your conclusion. Because my dream is becoming a tenure professor, I consider my study career seriously. Therefore, I prefer living in university dormitories because I can focus most of my energy into my studies without worrying about additional living expenses and handling some complex documents related to off-campus apartment housing. There is another distraction that can significantly disturb me from my studying. For instance, commuting to the university takes unnecessary time and energy. 
it is better if I stay in the university dormitory so I can manage my time and energy efficiently and allocate it to improve the quality of my study. I think we got it. So there you go. So what did I do? I actually made some restructuring changes to your writing so that it would better uh, frame your writing more as a compare and a contrast type essay. So if you see this on the TOEFL IBT exam, and it is possible, they do, they do ask the compare and contrast sometimes. The main thing is, if it's a two-part compare and contrast question where it says compare first and then it argues second, make sure you spend a good bit of your time in the essay doing the compare and contrast first and then move into the argumentative aspects of your writing last. That's going to give you a really nice, coherent organization. All right. Anyway, thank you for uh, completing the uh, independent writing practice test eight. And thank you for paying for the additional service to have your essay error corrected. All right. Thank you.